everyone. Today I'm going to go over scanning with you and what we're going to use is an iTero scanner. Now you might have a three shave, you might have uh, other scanners like Medit, there's so many out in the market right now but particularly when we do clear liners you tend to find a lot of people have iTero. So we've got an iTero here, it's quite fairly simple to set up a patient in a new scan. Uh, we've got the patient set up here and we've got various ways of choosing your scan. You could do an Invisalign, iRecord, Vivera. Um, iRecord means you can export it as STL files and send it to other labs for your crown work, for any kind of occlusal splint, uh, to your 3D printer, uh, or to a lab externally to make you an appliance. So you can capture any part of the mouth here. So from teeth, including palate and gingiva and mucosa. So what we're going to do for this particular purpose, we're going to choose Invisalign and iRecord. That means we can choose to send this to Invisalign or we could choose to send it to a different laboratory to make aligners. So like Shaw, Smile or Spark. Um, you can set this up with laboratories connecting to your uh, scanner and that's something you can take up with your uh, reps of your different products um, that you use. So you can choose your treatment stage. For this we will say initial record and we would like to start scanning. So what this scan is, it takes multiple pictures. Uh, there's a, a disposable tip for every patient so you can remove it and put it on. Prior to scanning, just make sure the tip is on firmly and completely because if there's any air gaps or air pockets here, it can cause a drag in your scanning. If you ever feel that there's a drag in the scan, it might be a good idea to just change the tip and it should usually improve. Um, what you want to do is go to the scanning mode and you've got a little button here. Again, every scanner is different, but in iTero you have a side button to, to turn it on or off. So we would just wait and what we're going to do is scan in a very um, standard fashion. So we're going to start from um, the lower arch, for example, and we're going to go uh, clockwise. So we're going to start from lower left, go to the lower right, go to the upper uh, right, and then the upper left. What I also find easier to do is take the occlusal surfaces first, then you will twist the camera angle, take the buckle surfaces, and then take the linguals or the palatals and then usually you have an angle like that with the camera in the mouth. So we're going to begin our lower scan. You can select segments. You could select the upper first, lower later, or you could do one arch. So we're going to do a full arch, a full mouth scan here. And uh, we've got our lovely patient Sonia set up and ready to go. So we just get it in a scanning mode by turning the button on. So as I said, start with the terminal molar occlusal. There's multiple videos being taken here. If you watch and have a look, I'm constantly retracting the lip as well while I'm taking these scans. If I'm missing segments, that's okay. You can go back and fill them in. I am creating as seamless as possible. So I have to spend less time on it. So make sure your lip and cheeks are retracted. Now we have an edentulous space here that can make it a little bit tricky. Again, I'm changing the angle to go labially and buckly. Again, we change the angle. What you want to see if you look at my camera here, if the camera at some stages can't pick up, go back to the terminal molar and you'll find it picks up and starts to stitch all the little photos in a continuous video. So we have here a skeleton of a lower arch. Now, obviously, there's lots of voids here. And we need to fill them. So we're going to now turn our camera to get the buckle surfaces. The patient might need a break every now and then, but generally this tends to be quite comfortable. So you can give them a little break. And here we go again. So what we're going to do is make sure we don't have any blue segments. Now, again, if you see my camera is not picking up where I am, that's OK. Start with the terminal molar and it literally picks it up again. The dental spaces can be hard. So as you see, I'm really twisting my camera to get the proximal surfaces around that edential space. Blue bits, we need to make sure we don't see a lot of blue. So they're larger voids. Um, try to get back to the third molar if possible. In some patients, this may not be possible. 
right? So you may not be able to capture the third molar. It can be quite uncomfortable. As long as you get a half of that surface, that should be fine. So here we go again. This is our lower arch looking good. As you see, the edentulous space can be a challenge, but do your best. And just like any other dental technician, they can actually fill in a little bit of the voids there for you. So we've got a nice lower scan, making sure, again, we're going to get that blue bit covered up. So we're going to make sure we don't have any blues there. Okay, making sure you have about a millimeter of gingiva if you're gonna do aligners or retainers, a millimeter of gingiva across all the teeth. Um, any blue bits, again, we have them around the edentula space again. Try to just fill them up as best as possible. And you can see we're getting a better view here. Again, let's have a look. Lower arch. And you don't need to worry about the soft tissue in processing the gas removed. So we've got a nice lower arch. Okay, now we're going to go to the upper arch. So you can simply stop the scan. You can point to where you're going to be scanning. We're going to start the scan now. I like to start from the upper right side. Again, you're going to go in a fluid motion and just following, you're kind of making sure the camera can see the teeth. And if it ever gets lost, go back to the teeth with most anatomy. Um, that has already been captured and it's, it kind of remembers where you were. So as you can see, there's a drag here, but we're just gonna keep moving forward. Okay. If ever you feel that um, it is dragging again, just as you see, I'm creating a skeleton of the entire arch. The whole time you're retracting the lips and it's picking it up. Here we go. And if you're gonna really get to that terminal molar, ask the patient to just close a little bit, okay? So just closing your lower jaw a bit, half closed, that's good. And you can see you'll get quite a lot of that definition. Now we're going to the buccal surfaces of this scan. Okay, again, there's a drag there. It just needs, it's a bit slower than I am. If ever again, as I said, you get lost, go back to the terminal molar. And you can see the blue here, the void here. So we're going to just make sure we rotate our camera so there are no voids. Now we continue taking multiple photographs, making sure we've got one millimeter gingiva, changing angles okay. And you'll see the camera picks up. So what we have here is a upper scan that's pretty much done. If you see any void, you simply need to just take the views again. So it stitches them up. And if you look at my angulation now, as I'm doing the palatal surfaces, I'm more vertical with my camera than I was when I was doing buckle and occlusal. Any little voids here, again, if you can close a bit. If the patient can close a bit, you can often capture the terminal mold more is better, thank you. So here's our upper arch done. Now, if you did need the palette for doing an expander, that is also possible. You would simply just have to start from the anterior palette and give it a reference, and then you would just start scanning into the depths of the mucosa. So as you see, we're doing some palatal scans. You could also start from the palatal surfaces of the molars and go in into the palate. And you can slowly build up with multiple images. And you could also start from here. Again, this looks like, imagine being digital. In the digital age, you don't have to pull models. So you could actually get the depth of the, the ruby in here as well. Just have to push your camera a bit more. Now, some patients might be uncomfortable with this, but if you let them know what's happening, you can get the palatal area as well if you need an expander. So now, the most important thing is the bite. So we're going to go do a, a bite. So just point to that 
and making sure patient bites on all their posterior teeth. So make sure you're not postured forward, bite on all the back teeth. So open your mouth and close quickly. That's the one technique to really get them in centric occlusion. And you would like to take a bite on both sides uh, of most posterior teeth in occlusion. Okay, and we go back to the bite. There we go. So make sure patient's nice. And as you slip the camera inside and the buckle side, the patient stays quite closed. Make sure you're biting down hard, that's good. And usually, if there's any segments like this you and you think you've got to redo them, you can always click on a segment, delete it. Or if you wait enough, it should stitch it up. Okay, so again, if you think it's not stitching it up, you could redo a segment or you could retake the scan again and it should be able to pick it up. So here we go again, it's picked it up again. And what we're going to do is just send it for processing where it removes all the soft tissue, um, shows you any voids, any other areas where you can go back and fill before finally sending it to the lab, to Invisalign or to the cloud where you can extract it later as a steel file. These tips are disposable and they can be thrown out later and changed for the next patient. So thank you for watching a demonstration of iTero scanning. And I wish that you do great scans in your practice. You're gonna love it. Uh, you're never gonna take an impression again. And they're great for crown and bridge, great for any orthodontic appliance, any dental appliance. Um, and thank you for watching.